So you want to learn how to use Procreate Dreams? My name is Thorgeir and I've been teaching Procreate for about six years here on YouTube and I don't want to waste any of your time. So let's get right into it and start by learning about the user interface of Procreate Dreams. This right here is the user interface. And it is this interface that will allow you to do 2D animation, expressive videos and go wild with storytelling. You're going to be able to do stuff like this. Or stuff like this. So now that you're ready, let's explore Procreate Dreams together. Our journey begins with the user interface. Here we are at the timeline. This feature is the backbone of your animation work. Managing your project effectively starts with understanding this timeline. So let's break it down and see how you can use it to bring your ideas to life. The action button, or the playhead, like Procreate calls it, is a crucial element of the interface. It allows you to play from this point exactly right here, so I can just tap play. You can also pause it, of course. Now the cool thing about this button is that it serves a dual purpose. It is the playhead, but it's also the action button. And what that means is that it dictates where the action happens and also allows for adjustments like audio levels and adding keyframes. A good way to think about keyframes is you see me right here and now you see me right here. What you can do with keyframes is you can say, how long is it going to take for me to go from here to here? Is it going to be like this? Is it going to be slower? So when you're keyframing an audio file like we're doing right here, we're basically saying we want this audio to get lower over time or higher. And if we move this action button, this playhead, over to a video file, now we have different options because obviously there are different actions associated with a video file. And if we tap on the move icon right here, we get access to move and scale, warp and distort. And the beautiful thing is all of these are keyframable. So you can move and scale over time like I'm doing right here. You can warp or you can make it distort. But let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. So let's just swipe this down like so to get access to the previous menu. And let's tap on live filters. These are also keyframable. So you can adjust opacity over time. You can adjust things like Gaussian blur. So you can make it blurry over time and then not blurry. You can at sharpness, noise, hue, saturation, brightness. Uh, there's just so many things you can do here. And if you just take a look at the noise settings, there are so much you can talk about here. We're not going to dive into all of that in this video. Might do a follow up video about that. So make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss any of that. And the final part about the action button right here is the edit button. And if we tap on that, we can see we can split. So if you have a content on your timeline, you can split that content into two sections. So now you can, for example, move this section over here. And this adds up a huge amount of possibilities for video editors because you can import up to 8K of ProRes footage in here. Now you see me interacting with this timeline over here, doing all sorts of different gestures. Remember, we did this edit right here. We split this in two. I'm going to undo it. Well, we simply tap with two fingers and now we've undone what we did. Three finger tap and we redo it. Super simple. And if you want to full size the movie on the stage area, you tap with four fingers and that full sizes it. Now you can play the movie and you can scrub with your finger on the movie to revisit any part of the movie. And now we can tap back to go back to the stage area. And if you want to see the whole movie laid out on the timeline right here, well, you can scale out by doing this pinch move, which you might be familiar with on your smartphone. But if you want to have the tracks, each of these is a track. If you want to have them be this tall, you know, the height of them to be this tall, but you just want to compress the X axis, the time axis. Well, you can use three fingers and you can scrub to the left or to the right to extend or compress time. That is super, super useful. And the same thing applies for the Y axis. If you want to see all of the tracks, but you don't want to compress time, well, you can just swipe up and down like this. And with these few but powerful features, you now have the ability to dance around the timeline, to add actions precisely and flip back and forth between play and the movie. This seamless flow brings us to another fascinating aspect of Procreate Dreams, the flipbook and the drawing mode. First up, the drawing mode is pretty much like drawing in Procreate. You got your brushes, you got your layers, but here's the kicker. Every line that you draw can be a part of an animation. So it's like your regular Procreate canvas, but now every stroke has the potential to move and tell a story. Now the flipbook is where you get into the nitty gritty of traditional animation frame by frame. 
Think about it like these old flipbook cartoons where each page is a different image and flipping through them makes it look like they're moving. And that's what you're doing here. You're creating a series of drawings that, when played one after another, creates motion. Now let me just make one thing clear. Each frame can have multiple layers. But how do you make sure that your animation looks smooth? Well, that's where onion skin comes in. It's a feature that shows a faint image of your previous and next drawings. It's super helpful for making sure that each frame lines up just right with the next one, as all that your animation doesn't look choppy. And you can even add frames in between two frames like this. And what if you already got some great art in Procreate that you want to animate? So you made a fantastic artwork in Procreate and now you want to convert it over. Well, it's easy. You just bring it into Procreate Dreams by dragging and dropping it like so. And with a tap like this, you can turn all of those layers into individual animation tracks. It's a simple way to bring a static image to life. While Procreate Dreams gets you started with animation, mastering it involves learning about movement and storytelling. And for that, our Blaze's online courses are a fantastic resource. This isn't a sponsored segment. I genuinely respect Aaron's work. And after meeting with him and his team, I can vouch for their dedication and experience. Aaron, with his extensive experience at Disney, makes learning animation both accessible and enjoyable. His courses are also reasonably priced, and for anyone serious about animation, I highly recommend checking them out at creatureartteacher.com. I'll leave links in the description. And now, diving back into the world of Procreate Dreams, let's unravel another intriguing aspect of this app. Despite this being a pretty advanced animation, there are only about two visible tracks here, along with the keyframe tracks. Well, this simplicity is Procreate Dream's way of keeping your workspaces uncluttered while you focus on the creative process. These tracks represent groups or scenes that an artist has compiled. So when you tap on the little arrow beside a group, it expands to reveal the tracks within, showcasing the intricate details of each scene. And you can have groups within groups. For instance, if we expand this group here, you see how it unfolds into an elaborate array of different tracks, each contributing to the animation's complexity. This hierarchical setup allows animators to manage their scenes effectively, focusing on the individual elements without getting overwhelmed by the entire project's scope. Every track here represents a vital part of the animation, and with Procreate Dreams, you can fine tune each aspect to your liking, whether you're adjusting a single frame or refining an entire scene, the control is at your fingertips. You can add keyframes to the entire group or the entire group of groups. The beauty lies in the app's ability to handle complexity with simplicity. Now let's dive into another cool feature. If you tap on the track content without selecting anything else, you'll see different options appear. Here we have track options and you can add blending modes. And blend modes are like a magic trick for your layers. They change how a layer interacts with the layers below it. So for example, you can set a layer to soft light and it'll gently blend the layers beneath, adding a subtle effect to it. Let's now jump into the end of the animation right here. And I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how to transition from a drawing to creating keyframes and then performing live. Let's draw something very simple, like a circle right here. We first exit the drawing mode, and then I'll show you how easy it is to go from a drawing mode to creating keyframes. So now let's hit the perform button right here, and now it's ready. So any movement that'll make will be recorded. So for instance, if I do something like this, and then play it back, you see the results. It's not perfect, but I mean, that's the beauty of it. We can go back and tweak what didn't work. So for example, here, the circle bounces straight up and down. We need it to hang in the air a little bit before it goes back down. So let's adjust this keyframe and add another keyframe where it hits the ground. Now for more complex projects, you might want to group certain tracks together. Now you can do this by selecting the tracks that you want and then grouping them. It's really straightforward. It's this tool right here, and then you draw on the track, and then tap and hold and group. Now finally, let's talk about the three main buttons in the interface. These buttons are hidden under these three sections. One takes you back to the theater where all of your movies are stored, and let's take a look at that. In the theater, you have access to all of your movies. You can tap and hold on a movie to get access to all of the different things here. 
like sharing, duplicating, renaming, or copying to iCloud Drive. And now you see, we have two locations to choose from. This is basically Procreate saying, here the movies are stored. They're stored on your iPad, or they're stored on iCloud Drive. So if we move over to iCloud Drive, you now see that the movie has been stored on iCloud Drive. This opens up a huge amount of possibilities with collaboration. I'll talk about that in future videos. But moving back to the project, let's take a look at the next button right here, which is this one. And these are the movie settings. And here you can control everything about the movie, the frames per second, its duration, the width, the height, things about the states, things about the timeline, things about how it's going to be exported, and some preferences. I'm not going to dive into too much detail here, but I just want to point out that here is where these settings are controlled. And the final one is, we've talked about this one right here, which is the states options where you can show onion skin and hide onion skin. You can also edit the onion skin to say how many frames in the future and in the past it's going to show you, and what's the color of the onion skin. Anyways, I want to thank you all very much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos about Procreate Dreams, do let me know in the comments down below. And check out our YouTube channel, Art and Design, if you want to see more videos about Procreate Dreams. Also, that thumbs up button helps the video reach more viewers. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.